Hello, and thanks for coming back. Now to continue on, well, as I was talking about how much isolation you need on, uh, I was talking about gypsum board partitions, and uh, I didn't mention screw spacing and the types of studs, I don't think. So I wanna go over that just a little bit. Um, lots of testing has been done, and, the, and it all boils down to this. The more flexible the wall is, the better it is at, at, at trapping, absorbing, and stopping low frequency transmission. So the limper you can make a wall, the better. So I recommend a, a screw spacing on your studs be about every 24 inches or 60 centimeters. Um, and be sure that if you're doing multiple layers, be sure you overlap properly and you overlap the seams. For, a, for example, if you lay your sheets of drywall sideways like this, with the long, long this way and the short this way, put your first, uh, your first layer, your first sheet on the floor, space it up from the floor about nine millimeters or three eighths of an inch. Use some blocks, cut some pieces of plywood or something block it under there, set it in there, block it out from the corner, make sure that there, there is a gap in the corner. So this is where we're going to put back a rod and caulk because this is where things crack when building expands and contracts and everything. So anyway, we're going to space it out. I'll explain this later. Space it out, put the first sheet in, second sheet next to it, and then stack the next ones on top and continue up as, as tall as the wall is. Now you're going to have a seam at 1.2 meters or four feet off the floor. So your next sheet, I would recommend that you you cut it about 16 inches or 20, you can cut it in half in fact. Just cut it right down the middle and use the half of it, first half, and put that on the floor so that your, your, your seam starts at two feet or 60, uh, 60 centimeters. Now, don't put it right in the corner, move it over to the first stud, which would probably be 60 centimeters or 24 inches from the corner, and put it on that stud line. This way, you and, and cut and block it with a piece of cut drywall in that corner there, and continue with that with the 60 uh, centimeter or two foot piece of, of drywall right in there. Pack that in on the second layer. Put your full sheet on top of that. Again, moving it over to the right from the, from the corner, about 60 centimeters to 24 inches. So, and, and continue your wall like that. Now, if you have a third layer, do that again. Move, either put it back in the corner or move it further. It doesn't matter. So this way, you will have no seams on the same spot, this way or this way. They're all, uh, they're all in different places, of course, when you're plastering, you must mud and tape all the joints in the wall. And for each layer, I highly recommend you do this for every layer, is you take a uh, 12 millimeter or half inch backer rod, you can look it up, just do a search online, backer rod and stuff it in the crack all the way around the wall perimeter, floor and, and, and corners. Up the ceiling, we usually do the ceiling last. So you just go up to the ceiling, forget back of rod and caulk there for now. Do your walls, each layer, back of rod and caulk on top, then do the second layer, back of rod and caulk, etc. This is a redundancy. This makes, uh, makes it so that in case caulking cracks or breaks open, there's a, there's a hole, there's an air gap, and you're going to have sound leakage. So it's sort of redundant so that you have several layers of protection because one of these joints are going to fail at some point in time. The reason you want to do that is because buildings move all the time. They grow and they shrink and they grow and they shrink. Sun comes out, they get bigger. Sun goes down, they get smaller. Okay, Different, um, different products, different components, wood, concrete, steel, etc all expand and contract at different rates, and that's why you get cracks in walls. Uh, at, at the joints, in the corners, in the floor, in the ceiling, that's where you'll get cracks most usually. If you don't 
hook things up right, you can get cracks in the corner of the doors and stuff. So make sure everything's applied properly and the seams are sealed up properly and you'll be okay. Stud types, resilient studs are better than very rigid studs because if you attach a wall partition to something extremely rigid, its, its resonance will be higher, a higher frequency. So if you leave it uh, uh, less rigid, it's going to drop the resonance, okay? We can do a mass calculation, an airspace calculation based on like a membrane absorber and find a resonance of typical mass, but it doesn't take into account all the parameters involved, how rigid that thing is. Testing has been done that shows a, a wood stud is inferior to a steel stud because a steel stud is almost like a resilient channel. It's, it's a little more pliable. So it will lower the resonance, especially stud spacing from 16 inches to 24 inches, that is from 40 centimeters to 60 centimeters, is better for low frequency isolation. So you want to go that with your interior partition. Resonance always plays a part in every, anything and everything you do, but I think we'll get into that in the next video. Talk to you soon. Be sure to subscribe and Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, and please comment. Let me know if, if there's any particular subject you'd like me to talk, talk about or continue on more information. Let me know. See ya.